Hosea, the 60th chapter, starting in verse number 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So what he's saying is, darkness, there's darkness right now. Not only this time of the year, but there's a lot of darkness in this world right now. But his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And then if you turn to John, the eighth chapter. Verse number 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then our last scripture is in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Verse number four. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Christ's sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, Why? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this light. What are we going to do with it? Amen. You may be seated. Have you seen the light? Amen. Each of us. We've come out of darkness. Couldn't believe how naive I was even though I went to church and... and, um, went to services, but didn't really know much of God. This is a wonderful time of the year when people want to wrap up love. They want to express their love in a package, you know, some pretty gift, scratch their heads, try to figure out what somebody would like. Well, isn't that what Jesus did? All his love was put in a one package for each of us to open. Philippians 2 and 6 says, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. The ultimate gift from God in the package of Jesus Christ. And then we can't go through Christmas without reading this scripture in Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. There's the gift. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, this baby, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Such revelation. Amen. If there was ever a time to be bold for God, it's now. It really is. Uh, It's not happy holiday. It's not winter holiday. It's Merry Christmas. A miracle happened. God left heaven and came to save us in the flesh. It is the greatest of all miracles. It's time to bow down to the tree of Calvary. And open some eyes to the real meaning of Christmas. Our greatest gift came down from the Father of lights. He was the perfect gift, according to James 1 and 17. This is the the season of lights. Electric meters are like fans right now. It costs a whole lot of money in order to put lights out and decorate your houses. Yet, I, I don't see anybody skimping this year because of the cost of electricity. Maybe we should try to be the brightest light in our neighborhood. It might cost us a little more, you know, 
but we are supposed to be the light of the world. When God saved us, he turned each of us into a lighthouse, a Jesus star, a celestial body. We function like a natural lighthouse, giving direction to those who are lost. That's the purpose for a lighthouse. Uh, here, here's the direction, follow me. Some people can win souls just by walking into a room, a light that radiates from them. They've been so much with God that there's something about them, an aura of them, that causes people to say, what is it about you? You know, um, people couldn't look at the face of Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai. He was there for 40 days, and when he came down, his face shone so brightly that he had to put a veil over his face because it was, it was scaring the people. And, and, you know, the more you spend time with God, the greater the light within us. Did you know that you don't have to be Jewish to celebrate Hanukkah? That's right. Hanukkah is the festival of lights. This year, it is a celebration that started on December 18th and will end in the evening of December 26th or the day after Christmas. It is the eight-day celebration which began Saturday and ends the day after Christmas. Each night, one candle is lit on this eight-branch candlestick called the menorah. Most every one of you have seen the menorah. Uh, and every night for eight days, another candle will be lit, and then there's going to be songs, and there's going to be gifts, and there's going to be special foods to celebrate. The word Hanukkah means dedication. It makes the time... Um, in the second century BC, when the Jews came out of captivity, what they're doing is they're celebrating that and were to rebuild and dedicate the second temple after the first one was destroyed. So they're celebrating and rededicating the second temple and they're cleansing that second temple and part of Hanukkah is that festival. Does it sound familiar to what we're doing really we are now living in the temple of god the old man is to be destroyed this is the second temple if you will and at this time of the year it would be good for us to rededicate our new temple to god to cleanse that temple now according to the jewish history when the jews regained the temple they found enough oil to keep the lamps lit for just one day. But a miracle happened, and it burned for eight days. And that is why the menorah has eight candlesticks. In John 10 and 22, Jesus celebrated Hanukkah, and it was at Jerusalem, it says, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. The word dedication here is the word Hanukkah. So Jesus celebrated Hanukkah, which is a rededication. So at this time of the year, what could be the best thing we could do is to rededicate our life to God as a gift to him, you see? Now listen to this. The Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, was for re-cleansing the temple and um, was the festival of lights. And it was observed... On the 25th of the ninth month of the Jewish calendar, making it December 25th. I'm feeling better about Christmas, you know? The foundation for this festival of lights is found in the Bible in Zechariah, the fourth chapter. It talks about a golden candlestick fed by the oil of two olive trees meaning the Word of God and the Spirit of God that continually flowed through these candlesticks. It was a symbol of the time when the church would be a light unto the world. It's a type and shadow. It was an encouragement to Zerubbabel to rebuild and cleanse the temple. He was the one 
who, who, who told the people, this is what we need to do. The word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel in Zechariah 4 and 6. It says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. What Hanukkah symbolizes is at this time of the year, we are the light of the world and God wants us to finish the rebuilding of his temple. That's us. Rebuild the church as it should be, to rededicate ourselves at the time of this year in cleansing ourselves and presenting ourselves as a present, if you will, to God. Because God, I know it's been 40-some years, but I'm rededicating myself to you. I want to make sure that my hands are clean. I want to present myself to you. But it won't be because of our strength. And see, that's where the denominal uh, religions go wrong. They think they can do it in their own strength. They can't. I don't have the power within me. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord, that I'm able to rededicate and cleanse myself to God. Hallelujah. By the spirit of God that resides in the second temple, that's us. The first temple didn't work, but we had to be remade, a second temple. If you'll turn to Zechariah, I'm not preaching very long tonight, um, Zechariah, the fourth chapter, starting in verse number one, it says, and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and the seven pipes to the seven lamps, and are upon the top thereof. And the two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It, it was the word of God and the spirit of God that kept the oil flowing. You know, we can have a, a great um, Bible study, but without the spirit of God. We could have a great move of God without the word of God. It's not going to keep the, the flow. And then if you'll turn to Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 13. It says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and the gird about the paps with a golden girdle. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. We're talking about Jesus. Seven candlesticks and one or eight, which was Jesus. If you go on to the second chapter, in verse number one, it says, And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these, say, saith he that abideth, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. It's, it's the seven plus the one, or the eight candlesticks, if you will. All of what we celebrate at Christmas time is wonderful. Um, more people are open to the things of God at this time of the year than any other time. There's got to be some parents who have to explain to their children what Christmas is all about if they have the truth. And uh, we love uh, the gift of salvation and we love our family. We love our friends at this time of the year. It's a blessed time. But 
What about a gift for our Savior? A feast of rededication and cleansing of our second temple to God and become the light of the world. So if you'll turn to um, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, starting in verse 39. It says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh uh, of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So, there is also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, and the word celestial in the Greek means the abode of God. What, what God is saying is we are a celestial body. We are the habitation. We are the residency of God. We are the celestial body of God, a star, if you will, of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> what it says in, in Matthew, if you'll turn to Matthew, the second chapter, Starting in verse number 8, it says, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. We, when we were filled with the Holy Ghost, became a star. A star was born. God's ultimate uh, reason for us being here is to lead somebody else to Jesus Christ a celestial body. We are a a guiding light to those that are around us. I was telling somebody, uh, I think it was Sunday, the man who brought me into the church was an obnoxious guy. I mean, he was just so, um, I don't know, straightforward. You need to come to church, you know? And he kept that up. That guy brought more people to God than anybody else I know. Not because he had great oratory or, or manners, but he was just so tenacious, you know. He brought people to God. And, you know, it's really our main function as a body is to bring light to those who are in darkness. Leading people to Jesus Our energy or source of light comes from the power that is within us. And like the stars, it is balanced by the outflow of energy that we produce by our witnessing. And by our witnessing to other people, it creates more energy for us to be more of a light for God. Without that, we're, we're without power, we're, we're, we're without light. All we have to do is plug in to the power because Jesus has already paid the bill. You know, if there was ever a time in the year to show forth our light, if there was ever a time that people are more open and to sec- uh, ready to receive this, it's this time of the year. They like opening presents. And we have the greatest present, the greatest gift, 
than anyone could ever want. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? I said this uh, a couple of weeks ago. How many here are Jewish? Every one of us are Jewish. Amen. I'm the son of a, a, a Jewish father. Amen. And uh, I thought this uh, menorah, uh, Hanukkah, it was fascinating to me to see the origin of it. And, you know, it has something to do with my life at this time of the year. Amen. Do you love them tonight? Amen. Now, I don't want you crowding the altar. There's plenty of room for everybody. The altar is open. So